Good morning, Internet fans. It is Thursday, June 25th. Therefore, it is Internet Marketing Thursday. And I have the beautiful and talented Virginie Dorn with Business Website Center down in Petaluma, California. Good morning, Virginie. Hello, Ryan. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you. Uh, we are going to talk about e-commerce and some different payment plans that are out there. Uh, we were talking last week and how there are still people who are new to e-commerce and they're just not really sure how do you collect payment. And I lost you. All right. Well, folks, this is the joys of doing live um, <laughs> live hangouts sometimes. We've been fighting. I couldn't hear her all morning, so I've been fighting with the speaker. And then she disappeared. Now she came back. It's the great Houdini. I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh huh. That's what that's what women always say. It wasn't me. It's always the guy's fault. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, I was just telling them we've we've been having fun this morning. I'm like, I feel like I need to put the the speaker to my ear just so I can hear you. Um, but let's not talk about our technical difficulties let's talk about uh e-commerce payment options and how people that are new to e-commerce may they be selling products maybe it's a nonprofit, and they're just not really sure how do you go about collecting payment and there's actually a few different ways that people can do that uh, correct so to begin with e-commerce is whenever you need to accept payment on your website and just as you mentioned payments can be for products and you sell online, it could be for services rendered, it could be for rental equipment, maybe some prepayment or deposit, and also for donations, which is especially true for nonprofit organizations. So just different ways you might want to, to have an e-commerce website to collect that kind of payment online. The truth of the matter, are there, there are free options, and that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, they all have uh, pros and cons. They don't work for everybody, so you do have to understand but primarily, what's your budget? How quickly do you want this to be integrated onto your website? What type of volume, I mean by this, how much sale do you plan to generate through that uh, shopping cart? And, uh, and um, again, what kind of clients you have? Because depending on all those answers, you can pick one of the three options we'll be discussing. So should I go with right. one? Well, it, the other thing I want to say is that, and depending on what you're doing, you may want to pick all three um, or pick two of three because uh, some people may like to pay this way or don't like to pay this way. So I always feel that if you have the ability to give people more options, give them more options. I, I agree. So well, let's quickly mention the three options and we'll go in more details into each of them. Number one, it's a fully integrated system with a merchant processing account and a gateway. The second one is a sort of semi-integration with a company like PayPal and with the little buttons that provide you. And the third one is to actually link to a third-party company that handles all the payments for you, and that's done off your site. It might still look like your website, but it will not be happening on your website. So the first one, which is a fully integrated payment system on your own website, it's truly the best out there. It's the most comprehensive, gives you the most uh, flexibility, but it's also the most expensive to program. And the truth of the matter, a lot of the um, so-called web designers will not be able to program such type of integration because it does require either a PHP or ASP programmer to do the work. But again, if you're looking at big volume, you want a fully integrated system. Right, and the one thing I will say, if we're gonna go with a merchant account that on the WordPress side, there are options there. Typically, it's tied into uh, some sort of e-commerce plugin or option that incorporates the gateway and all that information. You just simply have to copy and paste uh, tokens, credentials to get it over. The other thing I do want to say is that if you're looking to get a merchant account and you haven't done so, and basically a merchant account allows you to take Visa, MasterCard, Discover, uh, American Express, those types of credit cards, is that you do need to pass a credit background and they want to make sure that they understand what type of payments that you're processing. I know, um, gosh, it was probably two years in that I had mine because I do online payments for my clients. 
and I picked up a new account and the account was about 10 times the size of a normal account. So I made sure I called my merchant account and said, I'm going to be processing a payment that's 10 times my normal amount. Uh, otherwise, it could be red flagged and uh, it, they could hold back payment. Basically, they could, you know, tie it up, verify, confirm that everything's legit before they before they process that payment. Yes, so that's the merchant account. So you need your website, you need the merchant account, which is kind of a bank, uh, make sure the credit card runs smoothly and it's not fraudulent, you know, not red flag if it's a, like a weird amount. But in between, you need a gateway program. And so that's what's required online. The gateway is a software company that actually transcript the information safely and securely from your shopping cart into that uh, merchant account. So those are different things. Um, and that's the thing you have to think about. So the merchant account will be like First Data. First Data is the largest in the world. They do the most processing than any other banks. And truly, they're not a bank, they're a financial institution. Uh, a lot of the uh, banks are using First Data in the background to run their credit card processing. In between, you need a gateway. The most popular one is Offwise.net. It's uh, the most comprehensive one. It gives the most options. It allows for recurring payments. So for instance, if you have a a donation type website and someone wants to give ten dollars a month and not all gateway allow for it uh, so you have to be careful before you sign up to someone then you have a good webmaster and know how to ask the right questions because there you are you pay for a full integration with a new gateway and you find out then it only does one-time payment it doesn't do monthly or it doesn't allow your customers to go back and edit their credit card information when it changes maybe the expiration change and they don't allow for it. So that could be a huge deal because here you are thousands of dollars into programming and you have the wrong gateway. That means you're right. Cool. And I think, you know, what's really important about um, what you bring up is that then it's really important that you as the client understand what your needs are from the processing. And so working with somebody like Virginie who deals with this on a daily basis can actually walk you through, hey, here's some different scenarios. Do you plan on doing this? Do you plan on doing this? And these are things that you typically really only learn about through experience. Yes. So, um, yes. Talk to me. I'm happy to answer questions or give you the questions to ask your merchant account. Because oftentimes your merchant account, like First Data, will help you decide which gateway works for you. But all the agents don't know everything. Like you and I know Carrie. Uh, Carrie's great at that. But if you're not lucky to have her, um, you might forget to mention when you do recurring payments on your website. So but that's a full integration. What's great about it, again, the flexibility, it's comprehensive, it's customizable. It also has the lowest rate typically. So you pay less per transaction. You pay more upfront with the programming, but less per volume. So if you plan to do thousands and thousands of dollars in revenue on your website, you do want to go to that, that option because long term it will save you a lot of money. Right. And I think the only other thing that we should uh, mention that we did is that as far as your hosting, you need to make sure that you have an SSL certificate too. Yes. And uh, I'm not sure if it's a law, but to me it is required whenever you accept payments. The SSL certificate is what enables the HTTPS on your browser. And uh, what it means, it encrypts the information before it sends, it's sent to your gateway. So it takes all that credit card information, jumble it into the program, and then send it to the, the merchant account. That way it's secured and nobody can hack into it. So and SSL, yes, it's only 69 bucks a year typically, worth having that investment. So that's a fully integrated system. Again, more expensive upfront, cheaper in the long run, especially if you do large volume. The second option is a semi-integration. So think of PayPal. So PayPal typically is more per transaction. So the low percentage rate they charge you for using their services is higher than First Data. Uh, that's because they handle pretty much everything. They handle the gateway, the credit card processing, and they make it very easy. And by semi-integration, uh, I'm referring more to the little buttons than you can do. You don't need to be a programmer. You can go into your PayPal account. You can actually create widgets and plugins and little buttons. Again, if, a, if it's not fully customizable, I mean, you can make, uh, but if you have a shopping cart with 5,000 products, that's not going to be an option because you can't do 5,000 buttons. You can also use 
PayPal, just like a fully integrated system, but then we go back to option one. So PayPal has what we call in our industry an API, which is an integration format for us, for programmers. But PayPal, again, if it's a small shopping cart, a gift shop, maybe you sell in a couple of items a day, great option, uh, very affordable on the upfront. It's not going to cost you much more you know, by the tra transaction fee. And it's very easy to do. If you have WordPress, they make it even easier to plug those little buttons there. Now, the third one, and people uh, don't think about it, is a third-party company. And by this, I mean it's linked to a company that will handle everything for you. They will handle the security. They will handle the collection of the credit card, uh, the ability for people to go back and edit their credit card information and view their order. They handle the fraud. They handle the deposit of the money into your personal or business uh, checking account. It's a third party. It's usually more expensive, but it, they take care of all the issues. That's what's so great about them. Now, so it's good and bad and everything. Good is, again, they take care of all the issue. The responsibility of collecting the credit card rests on their shoulders. So if there's any security breach, it's their issue, not you, legally. The, the second part, if they get bought by someone else, so they go out of business, then you have to look for another provider. There's one I like to mention, because we work a lot with nonprofit organization, it's called FrontStream. So FrontStream.com. All the nonprofit organization, when I switch to them, to handle their donation payments uh, have been very happy with the process. Easy for them to use, doesn't require a programmer, so it saves them money. That's something they can do on their own, and you can customize the front strip for the platform, like many others, to look kind of like your website, you know, your logo, your color theme. Okay, good, because I was going to ask you about that, because I know, uh, especially years ago, it was always kind of frowned upon doing something like that, because here you are in a branded website, and then all of a sudden you're taken somewhere else that looks totally foreign, doesn't have any branding, and at that point, I'm, you know, it's like, oh, did I just get fished? Is this legitimate? Um, so it was kind of frowned upon, because people would actually go all the way to the payment process part, and then stop because they were actually referred to another website and that scared them off. It's very true. And it's just recently in the last two to three years when those companies have caught up with the issue. And what they do, they give two options. Either it's a link to them and then you can customize it to look kind of like your website so it's not too much of a departure. Or some of them take it a step further and you can embed very code into your website, so you, it has the frame of your website, it has your header and your footer, if you have the right column, it has the right column, and the center is actually their engine, it's their payment engine, but people don't realize, kind of like embedding a, a video from YouTube onto your website, it is your website, the video portion though, it's YouTube, it's just embedding that information. Uh, I love embedding third-party companies. Again, it's relieve a lot of the stress on my customer side. They handle everything. They do pay a little bit more money. And when we can embed it, the visitors has a very good and positive experience because it's still on the website. All right, very cool. And, and I'm glad to hear that they're actually um, creating some branding ability. Let's go back to um, PayPal as an example. And I think, you know, some people, when you start out small, your first time, it's real easy. PayPal, I love the fact that you can create buttons. They do have some flexibility. Uh, creates limitations. The nice part is you do not need an SSL certificate. So if something like that scares you, you're not sure, um, because PayPal's handling the transaction, great. The other nice thing about PayPal is that they also accept credit cards. So it's, you know, back in the old days, you had to have a PayPal account to use PayPal. Nowadays, people can actually type in their credit cards. And I think if, like you said, Virginia, if it's small transactions, limited here and there, maybe you don't have good credit and you, you're not able to get a merchant account, um, PayPal is definitely a way to go. And then as you grow, grow into a merchant account. The one thing I do recommend, regardless of volume, is that you maintain both a PayPal and a merchant account. And if you're, um, if you're gonna make more money off of the merchant account because their fees are less, then just simply set that as a priority so that when people go check out, it defaults to the merchant account so people can just put in their credit card, but they still have a, a PayPal option because there's always gonna be that small percentage that's going to prefer PayPal just because it's comfortable for them. And we just, we don't wanna turn people away. 
Yeah, I love giving the two options. And just as you mentioned, typically we put the full credit card processing as an option on the top of a checkout page and the PayPal little logo right underneath for those few they do like using their PayPal account. So that, that takes care of all your type of clients. All right, perfect. Well, with that, uh, our time is up. So essentially, you've got three different options. You've got PayPal. Hopefully, everybody's pretty familiar with that. There's the tra uh, traditional merchant account that requires more setup on your end to take care of it, manage it. Uh, plus, you have other rules and regulations just around uh, keeping and maintaining credit card information nowadays. And then the third option is, okay, I'm just going to outsource it and let somebody else manage all that. And just understand you got to pay a little bit more in fees. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, Virginie, as always, I appreciate your time and energy and effort that you put into this. Um, I know, you know, the information that you provide to our customer base or the viewers, I should say, um, is always very good. Thank you very much. My real pleasure. Take care. All right, take care and we'll see y'all next week.